Madam Speaker, the cover-up continues. The Prime Minister covered up Beijing's interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections because it benefited the Liberal Party. When he got caught, the Prime Minister went to extraordinary lengths to cover up what he knew and what he failed to do about Beijing's interference. When the Procedure and House Affairs Committee commenced hearings to get to the bottom of Beijing's interference, the Prime Minister repeatedly ordered Liberal MPs on the committee to obstruct the work of the committee and to block the production of relevant documents. Instead of calling a public inquiry, the Prime Minister appointed a long-standing family friend as his fake rapporteur to write a whitewash of a report exonerating the Prime Minister. The, when the fake rapporteur got to work, he hired a bunch of liberal hacks who wrote that whitewash of a report that the Prime Minister wanted. However, when the report was not, uh, be, be, was not able to be held up to basic scrutiny, the fake rapporteur resigned and the Prime Minister uh, was dragged kicking and screaming into calling a public inquiry. Upon the inquiry being struck, the Minister of Public Safety assured Canadians uh, that the Commissioner, Madam Justice Hogue, would have access to all relevant documents. It turns out that the Minister was insincere with his words because the Globe and Mail has reported that the Prime Minister has withheld an undisclosed number of documents from Adam Justice Hogue. The Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, has admitted that of the documents turned over to Madam Justice Hogue, fully 10 percent have been redacted. I underscore that these are documents that Madam Justice Hogue has requested. The Prime Minister is obstructing the work of Madam Justice Hogue to fulfill her core mandate and that is to determine what the Prime Minister knew, when he knew about it, and what he did or failed to do about foreign interference threats, including Beijing's attack on our democracy. Madam Justice Hogue issued her first report a few weeks ago. It is a damning indictment of the Prime Minister. Among the conclusions that she makes is that the Prime Minister made decisions with respect to countering foreign interference on the basis of giving consideration to direct electoral consequences. In other words, the Prime Minister put his interests and the interests of the Liberal Party ahead of working to counter foreign interference to protect our sovereignty and our democracy. And that was based on the documents that the Prime Minister allowed Madam Justice Ho to see. One can only imagine how much more damning her report would have been had she been able to see all of the documents. And now, as Madam Justice Hogue prepares to write a second report to be issued in the coming months, the cover-up continues. If the Prime Minister has nothing to hide, then why won't he stop the obstruction, stop the cover-up, and turn over all of the documents requested by Madam Justice Hogue? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Government House Leader. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Just to start off, it is interesting how the member uh, continued with the, the character assassination of an outstanding uh, Canadian. Uh, when he's talking about the special rapporteur, what he's really talking about is the former Governor General. When he labeled him as a liberal and, and, and appointing all these other uh, liberals type of thing, what people should realize is that the, uh, the Right Honourable David Johnson was actually appointed as the Governor General by former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And the last time I checked, Stephen Harper was not a liberal, he was a conservative. Um, a man that was held in fairly high esteem. Um, and it's unfortunate that the Conservative Party and their ramped up rhetoric uh, felt it was necessary to throw him under the bus in the fashion in which he, they did. I personally thought it was somewhat disgraceful. Having said that, uh, Madam Speaker, when you think in terms of what it is that the, we're talking about this evening, nothing could be further from the truth in terms of the manner in which this government has actually dealt with uh, foreign inter interference. In fact, the government of Canada not only consulted but worked openly with all recognized parties in the House to collaboratively develop the terms of reference for the Commission. 
all parties agreed to those terms of reference as well as to the appointment of the commissioner herself. One of the key aspects of the terms of reference is, is that the commission has essentially unlimited access to classified information related to its mandate. The terms of reference are very clear that the commission is to have access to certain cabinet documents that are relevant to its work. The government agreed to this approach, although it is exceedingly rare for something of that nature to occur. Cabinet confidence uh, is a bedrock principle of the Westminster uh, system of government. Uh, the notion that such a principle can be thrown out in the sweeping approach to government records undercuts the very same democracy that we're trying to actually protect. All of the cabinet documents that were committed to in terms of the reference uh, have been already provided uh, to the commission, uh, Madam Speaker. I would contrast in terms of the manner in which we as a government have approached this issue to the manner in which the leader of the Conservative Reform Party has done to date. The leader of the, Confer uh, of the Con uh, Conservative Reform Party, uh, Madam Speaker, hasn't even acknowledged or desired in any way to actually get the security clearance necessary in order to, to get the information that will answer the types of questions that the member is looking for. He doesn't want to get that. He intentionally chooses to be ignorant of the facts, Madam Speaker. Contrast that to the leader of the New Democratic Party. In fact, the leader of the Green Party had a very interesting uh, public uh, uh, press conference earlier today, from what I understand, after getting the debriefing, was very clear with Canadians as to what, what is that she thought. But at least she took the interest and the time, not only to get the clearance, but then to look at the report, uh, Madam Speaker, unredacted. And we know what her comments are. are. But that doesn't you know, solve the appetite for the Conservatives to go on a, uh, a you know, a vengeful uh, a character assassination hunt in terms of what it is and who it is that they can go after, uh, Madam Speaker. I am surprised and disappointed in the leader of the Conservative Party, but I shouldn't be because even when he was the minister responsible for uh, the Elections Canada, uh, Madam Speaker, who played that important role, he did absolutely nothing on foreign interference as he knew back then that it was an issue, but chose intentionally again to do nothing. For St. Albert Edmonton. Madam Speaker, the Parliamentary Secretary is misrepresenting the facts to the extent that he suggested that all relevant documents have been turned over to Madam Justice Hogue. The Procedure and House Affairs Committee passed a motion to get to the bottom of a Prime Minister's obstruction with respect to turning over documents. And on June 7th, counsel to Madam Justice Hogue wrote to the committee stating, quote, the interest of the commission and the interest of the committee would appear to align, end of quote. In short, the commissioner agrees with the committee that the prime minister needs to turn over the documents. The prime minister can't pick and choose which documents to turn over to Madam Justice Hoke because a core aspect of what she is examining is the prime minister's conduct, the decisions that he made, and frankly his failures to protect our sovereignty and democracy yeah, yeah. from foreign interference. It begs the question, what is it in those documents that is so damning to the Prime Minister that he is hiding them from Madam Justice Holt. Parliamentary Secretary. Yes, Madam Speaker, put very simply in a point form, the Government of Canada worked openly and collaboratively with all recognized parties inside this House to develop the terms of references of the Commission. That is a fact. The government continues to support the Commission by providing tens of thousands of classified documents while respecting the terms of reference and the underlying principle of cabinet confidence and safeguarding the critical interests of Canada and its allies. That is a fact. No matter how it is the Conservatives want to put some sort of a, a spin or, or provide misinformation uh, to Canadians, I think it's always better if we stick to the facts of the matter, Ms., uh, Madam Speaker. And by the way, I would conclude that the leader of the Conservative Reform Party should also take advantage and get the debriefing so he'll be better informed.